All right, Big Bang, today is Thursday. It is January 6th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. We got our first free swim of the year. It is myself, it is Dante, it is Chief, and we also have another buddy joining us for today's show because I, I, I just felt the need to include you today, Dave. So welcome. Why welcome, are you talking Dave. all soft like we're in AM radio and 3 I don't think I am. If you were wearing lines. headphones, you wouldn't think I am either. It's true. Thank I mean, you. We don't have anybody on Zoom, but it's, it's fine. But now, now you're doing you the NPR good. voice. Yeah. Well, I was doing it because of that. <laughs> should we all do this the whole episode? We'll just we talk should. like this. I just watched that Shreddy Balls one recently, actually. Uh, well, I know NPR is like its own thing, but when I think of NPR, I think of that fucking SNL thing. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? Sorry. Uh, did that uh, go uh, over everybody's head? It did. Baldwin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's like one of the most. F- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, want to say one the, of the most the, famous. With the, the, yeah. with the two. I want to shuck, suck on your sweaty balls. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. I know what you're talking about. Now. Look at that hat from Dante, National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. That's pretty nice. My uncle's a founding member. Is he? I bet yeah. he is. Nice. Is uh, is, is did they already induct Rizzo or no? A long time ago. Oh yeah. I think like <laughs> what? Anytime anyone gets like a sniff of the pro leagues and they have they like have a, a vowel, vowel in their yeah. last name they like induct him immediately i think he was inducted when he was a red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> probably true yeah but that's funny so like if dave's last name was with a ended in a vowel and he threw 91 on the speed gun would he get in seems no. like it's that easy he'd, he'd have to be on a pro roster hmm. so but, that's it is anybody who's ever been like sniffed Italian heritage gets in if you play. Yeah, program. it's weird. There's a lot of like people that get inducted every year, and you're like, wait, what the fuck? They're Italian, and they post their like lineage on the thing, and it's like their mom's mom's mom. My uh, how Italian, Italian is Anthony? Uh, I think he's 100. percent Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, sounds yeah. sounds and looks pretty Italian. Yeah, he does. Uh, one of my college roommates, you guys have probably all met him. He got, he was a Jewish All American uh, for all sports, for all collegiate, like all collegiate levels in what was it, 2011 for pitching 60 good innings at North Central College. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So he's a Jewish All American? He's a Jewish All American. I remember when uh, David Eckstein got inducted into that and he had to be like, hey guys. I'm actually not Jewish. Oh, that <laughs> the, happened? The exact yes. So yes. I don't remember that. Our yeah. conference player of the year that year was also on our team, Matt Abraham, and he got nominated, and he's like, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's very funny. Eckstein sounds like uh, yeah. as Jewish as he can oh, be. Oh, big time. That's well, like, it's like Feidelberg. Yeah. Well, and, and my in-laws are Catholic Rosenbaums. So, like, that Rosenbaums That's are very... That's very Jewish. But That's my old doctor. Yeah. So, uh, before we kick things off today, well, we had a, this was a great doc. I'm just going to say it really. It like it. I had scrolled, it got 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I had scrolled by it several times, being like, "Ah, eh, like I'm not super intrigued by that." Within five minutes, I was like, "Holy fuck!" I knew Eddie was going to rave about this. The minute why you didn't like it? <laughs> no, I, I liked it, but I fine. watching it. I was like, Eddie's gonna fucking think this is the best doc ever. Um, it was called Beanie Mania. It was on HBO Max. We're gonna talk a lot about it. Before we do though, I gotta talk about Upstart because if you maybe uh, spent too much money on Beanie Babies back in the day, and you find yourself in a tough financial situation, uh, paying off credit card debt, mm. Upstart is here for you. Because Upstart is a fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan that's all done online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. So, and uh, you can even receive the funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan, which is good if you need the money faster, if you got a, uh, you know, if you spent too much money very quickly on a rare beanie baby. Uh, so <laughs> find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Eddie. That's upstart.com slash Eddie, E-D-D-I-E. Don't forget to use that URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application 
Uh, upstart.com slash Eddie once again. Start being smarter about your debt, people. It's the best way to go. Um, all right, so Beanie Mania. I didn't, like, I usually, like, how I gauge it a lot, too. Like, how, this doesn't mean it's necessarily, like, the best. This just means, like, you know, like, I was locked in and I wasn't bored. I didn't check with my phone, like, once. That's how I didn't it, either. That's how you judge it. Yeah. Yes. Like, like I'm like you know, that that stands. That means something, right? It doesn't mean it's Big like the time. best thing of all time, but that stands for something when it comes to like being an easy watch. I mm-hmm. was taking extensive notes on my phone. Yeah, I took some notes. <laughs> too. Yep. I took some notes too. I took. It was like I have to remember this for. Do I walk tomorrow? It was so Ed. He texted me at like I don't know maybe eleven o'clock last night. He's like, <laughs> watch this for tomorrow. I was like. What? <laughs> I had never heard of it. I'm like, all right, well, if I start anything right now, I will be asleep within 30 seconds. And so I woke up at like 8 and 8.30 or whatever. I watched it. And it's weird because I have known this exact story for years now. Really? Because Naperville Dave. of Naperville. Oh, dude, and I was blown away by dude, that. I didn't know it was So that. back back when – so he was in the documentary. Dave Soboleski, he yeah. was a stud point guard for uh, – Northwestern is the same guy? Same wait, guy, yes. Wait, the yeah, mob? The fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. So, like, I recognize the name. I'm like, he oh, was, I wonder He was Frank Kaminsky's point guard at Bennett Academy, no which is shit. 10 minutes away from where I grew up. And when he committed – he was younger than me. I'm sure we have mutual friends. I've never talked to him personally. I knew his brother a little bit because he would train at the gym. Okay. And Lyle I played at. And I was like, oh, Soboleski, he's he's – all state going to Northwestern, awesome, blah blah blah. And Pat, my old roommate, a friend friend of mine, Ryan knows him. He's like, you know, you know who his mom is and how they're so wealthy. <laughs> I'm like, no. And she's like, he's like, she like knew how to buy and sell, trade, flip beanie babies or something, and made millions off of it. I'm like, what the fuck are you? She talking started about? a magazine, started the magazine and everything. Was like, sued into like sued into Bolivian, all that. Yeah. Shit. yeah. I and listen, there's nothing. I said. I'm sure he's a great guy. I hated his role. Like they like brought him on. They're like, this is the guy I who uh, went to college, and all he did it. was all he did was explain supply and demand. That's yeah. it. Like, like I almost feel bad. Econ like, one and one. Yes, yeah, so like he probably didn't know that they were gonna edit it in that, that way. way. Yeah. Exactly. But I almost felt bad for him because it was like everything he said was like, yeah, no shit, no dude. shit, dude. Like, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> we get it. But explain I, to me a market bubble again. Yeah, exactly. But I think he did a good job of just, like showing that. The no offense to the women, they were kind of oblivious to this, and he was like the voice of reason. Where he was saying this stuff, and he was like, "Yeah, it was not a surprise that I I would have had way more respect if they had like clips of him in 1998 <laughs> as like an 11 year old being like, Mom, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this shit is a bubble.' So uh, a few things out of the gate." And that's what right when I texted Dave and I saw the Naperville called a sack, I was like, I got to text Dave to watch this <laughs> just for the simple fact like that. Like nobody would have caught that except for Dave. Yeah. So I looked it up immediately because there was one cross street and like I as soon as I saw the cross street, I'm like, I know exactly where that neighborhood is. Yeah. I, yeah. And, I, and I knew I was like, this is what this is. Dave's going to watch this. And uh, so so I did not know it originated here. I had, no, had no yes. clue, no idea. I don't even think I realized that it was not in big stores. I did. I, I remember did? that. I, I remember didn't know that either. I thought they were only in Hallmark stores. My my parents would get them at uh, fa- what's the candy shop? Not Fannie Mae. Oh, s- Fannie Mae's a fa- candy shop. Fannie, oh, Fannie Mae. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was Fannie thinking of Sally Mae. I was thinking of Sally Mae, but it's Fannie Mae. Yeah, Fannie Mae's a Chicago. Fuck Sally Mae. Fannie Mae's a Chicago thing. Yeah, Fannie Mae. You could get Beanie Babies there. That's where. But there isn't there. There's Fannie and Freddie. Mac. Okay, Bro, Fannie so, Mae is awesome. Yeah, I've actually never had it. They have, they have wicked, oh, good, ice, they have wicked good ice cream, too. Do they? Yeah. Fannie, Fannie Mae is ice cream? One. They, really? The one on Michigan Ave does. Oh, really? Yeah, it's fine. Dude, you never had their, the Pixies, the Turtles? No. Oh, knock your dick off, dude. I'm not a big <laughs> sweets guy. They're good, though. Yeah. I'm a big turtle. You like you're chocolate? a chocolate guy. What? You're a chocolate guy. Uh, why do you say that? You don't like chocolate? Uh, no, I do, but it's not like I don't have like... Have you had them? Fuck yeah. They're pixies? Oh, they're p- unbelievable. They, what they, what that's is a Christmas pictures? thing, though, right? Uh, no, all year round. What's the Christmas thing they do that's uh, people are lined up for all the time? It's not the milk melt the ways, right? No. Nah, it's, I, I forget. Fuck, I see the sign for it. Talks every day. Dude, Fannie Mae's shit. 
Yeah, they're, um, uh, they're really good. Yeah. yeah, they weren't in Walmart or nothing. You couldn't. But they that, didn't sell Beanie Babies. They that made me respect chocolate. the fuck out of Ty when he was like, yeah. when they showed the Toys R Us guy and he was like pleading on camera, we're the biggest toy retailer in the in the World. country. Why wouldn't yeah. you sell to us in our store? And he was just like, nope. Get him on, Bro, lo- get him on eBay like everybody else, bitch. It's <laughs> like, that's, no, but his marketing yeah. lady was like, he was very pro small business. Yeah. Did anybody have that, mo- that thought when you saw that though? Where, like, if someone really wanted to, like, change the market cap and change how things are done, like, they have to do this again? Yeah, but it's impossible today. Yeah. Is it? It was pre-internet. It was, like, all of those... Jeff Bezos, all those stores that sold Beanie Babies, Jeff Bezos put them out of business. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what if Jeff Bezos was like, hey, like, I understand where you guys are coming from. Like, I think... You know, some, like, storefronts are... I mean, he's made Amazon fucking kitchens or whatever the fuck it is. Like... If this was like an effort to be like, hey, we're going to use some exclusive items and put them in these stores. And I don't know. I, it just made me think like there it was a be way. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like there was a way to like, dude, there is definitely some stores that probably hung on for 10 more years oh, because of these. Time. They were. Oh, did you see how half the ones they showed were in like strip malls in middle America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that was pretty fucking cool how they did that. Yeah. But back to the Illinois thing. So growing up on the East Coast, I mean, the Beanie Babies were fucking everywhere. Yeah, I had. So I it was similar to you texting Dave last night. I texted Cheryl at 10 o'clock and I was like, hey, watching the Beanie Baby documentary. She's uh, probably so sick of do us. You have, yeah. She, <laughs> what the fuck so I, I like ask her if she wants in or not before I start watching it. And she was like, are you serious? Because we're in the middle of Yellowstone now, yeah. which is I am fucking so addicted. It's a great show. So addicted. But she was like, yeah, we'll watch it. And they had all the footage of like ABC seven back yep. in the day and uh, her coworkers and stuff. So we were she was like cracking up at that. But even she was like, oh, my God, this started in like Naperville, Illinois. Dude, they had the guy, they had this B-roll, David Gregory, I think is his name. Like he's running or was it for a time, meet the press. Yep. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah, they had like in the late 90s, David Gregory's covering like, the, he's at O'Hare talking about Beanie Babies. <laughs> Fast forward 20 years, he has the number one news <laughs> show in the world is meet the press. It's just like, this is like that type of thing, like blew my mind too. So they were just, on, dude, they were on CNBC talking about like these moms were on cnbc it was bananas and i thought about even when they brought up the tickle me elmo in the n64 does that happen anymore where they like highlight like the big new yeah. toy of the year yeah does it yeah i feel like it i feel like it, i think it's because we're not that age and, and we, we don't have kids, yeah. kids but i feel like there hasn't been a fucking right like a hot craze. toy like yeah uh, like, craze. It's, like everything's gone so like marvel it's and, all like, digital cars it's all and digital Pixar. right yeah, yeah. Like nothing's gone really, and I know Elmo is fucking obviously Nintendo's huge too, but I don't know. Something just tells me that there hasn't been something like that. So yo, did you see when they showed the commercial and they were like showing the '90s and all the trends and stuff? I stopped it because did you see these sock em bop em things? Dude, yes, 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 yes. I yes, was yes. like, I, I couldn't I, wait to talk about it. I turned to share. <laughs> I put this in my notes. And I was like. How, where were these when I was a kid? I we never saw them. Yeah, oh, we talked Dude, about this like two weeks ago. I never oh, fucking yeah, yeah. saw in those the, before. In that commercial, they were like... I was no, gonna say, in reality, to we were fucking all, wailing on each dude, other. Dude, they had to be a mid Midwest thing because I never oh, saw them bro. until I saw this commercial. We were talking I about this. I drafted them, dude. Yeah, dude I never it. saw. Th- I was. Oh, I was yeah. so. Dude. I saw this commercial and was like, I told. Fuck, I, I think where I said in my childhood. I, I think I said this on the on the toy snake draft where we had like. The uh, the trampoline, the kid in the neighborhood, the trampoline with a net all the way around. That just turned into a boxing gym. Yeah, no, like you dude, just yeah. beat the shit out of it. Oh, yeah. I, 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 never, basically, I, until somebody like caught the ridge of it on their lip and started bleeding. Dude, that I legit, I, I drafted that in the toy draft. Those things were big. Like you had, we said like people are going to be filing class actions for. Can CTE. you imagine if those were today? If they they tried to oh, put those out today, oh, they get canceled oh, so yeah. fast. I, I mean, they basically like did like back then. Even people knew they were very dangerous. Like it was, <laughs> yeah. dude. It I was can, a thing. My brother's five years younger than me, and to this day, the image of the whiplash he would get from me just <laughs> rearing back and throwing a haymaker as hard as I could at square at his nose is burned into my. I, so I, were they just like floaties? That yes, you mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's what exactly they were. they were. You stuck your fist in them, and then we got them. So my brother, like I said, this on that on that draft too. So sorry for repeating myself, but. 
like we got him and my brother was like 10 years younger than me. So I'd be on my knees. I think I was 17 or 18. He was seven or eight. And like he made, he gave me a bloody nose. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this game sucks now. <laughs> like yeah, I can't, can't really hit you cause you're a baby Fuck. and I'm getting bloodied over here. So, but, but back to beanie babies, I also, and I knew they were fucking huge. But a billion dollar industry. Oh yeah, Bro. I didn't know. Like four multi billion. Two thousand one, four billion dollars oh, in yeah. revenue. That's. Do you know? How, like today, that's a lot of money. But dude, in they 2001, were. Two thousand one, that is astronomical amount. Of money. And they were only like what ten bucks. Not expensive. Retail. Yeah, yeah. retail. I think they were like five ninety nine or yeah, something. That's what I'm so did you? Did you guys collect them? I didn't. No, I never my did. But I had did. four sisters. Yeah. So my, my house did. was littered with them. And I remember when they were giving out at McDonald's fucking I, I, have, I have an unbelievable there. story about that. I don't we'll get to that though. But what I would so there was a lady that lived across the street from us and she was uh, everybody fucking hated her. Her name is Marcia Green. She was about 5000 pounds and there is zero chance she is still living. She got she did get arrested a few times for drug issues. She was bad person. What the fuck, but dude. She was huge into Why beanie babies. Her down the river. Well, she's there's no way she's alive still. There's no way. But we anyways, hope. we hope. The I hope she is and she got her life together. Oh, well, that'd be nice, but fuck I don't think damn. she did. I highly doubt it. My sister had the butterfly one called it was called Flutters, I believe. And apparently that was one of the like really, really collectible ones. Like, do not lose this thing. It's worth a lot of money. And my the lady across the street ripped my sister off with like, I'll give you these three for that one. And my sister is none the wiser. Didn't know a three she, for one yeah, trade. Three for one I used trade. I do that exactly. with baseball cards. I used to do oh, it with yeah. baseball cards too. And uh, my dad fucking flipped on her. He's I like, got, give me that fucking thing back. I got the shit beat out of me too for one. But. Yeah, so she swindled your sister with Swind Yeah, my sister would have been late six, seven years old. And my dad lost my his mind on her because it was like worth thousands of dollars. Did he get time. it back? Yeah, he no? got it back. Okay, good. But there was like that kind of shit going around, like the forgeries. I watched a documentary on China the other day. Oh, yeah. That's, yep. that's what they and said. 85% of all counterfeit anything comes from China today. Mm -hmm. Back then, I'm sure they were just pumping out. It was great when the guy out. at O'Hare, the customs agent, was on the news and he's like, yeah, we confiscated all these. Yep. We thought it was contraband. It was drugs. He goes, it ended up being stuffed animals. Like he had no clue. He was like, what the fuck? Where are the, why are they bringing these in? He was oblivious. Yeah. Do you, do you guys remember, or we might as well get into it then. Do you remember when they came to McDonald's? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, I, very, vividly, yes. the mini platypus one. I remember yep. having. Uh, teeny beanies. Yes. Yeah, teeny yeah. beanies. Yeah, that was, and, and it it just brought back like so. I for, totally forgot about that. So, so like McDonald's was selling out fucking their menu. So my be my best friend from Boston, his family is one of like the biggest McDonald's owner operators on the East Coast. They're off the boat from Italy. It's the weirdest thing. Wow. Okay. His dad moved to Philly. In a Hall of Fame. His dad moved to Philly when he was seventeen, from off the boat from Casenza, where my family's from too. And got a job like cleaning bathrooms, and he worked his way up. That's ah, the American dream. Now he owns like twenty-one McDonald's, and so we're we're. Uh, I think we just started high school when they started, and hit one of his stores got robbed. People <laughs> broke in and stole boxes of these Beanie Babies, and two of the other ones they had to like call the police multiple times because people were just going around the drive-through yeah. and scooping them people were trying to cut in line to like actually order food and these moms were losing their shit and like road rage like rammed yeah. cars and shit and i remember just being like what the fuck is wrong with people over a stuffed animal over mcdonald's happy meals that that and it was yeah. like they showed people were just taking the toy and chucking the happy the meal. food yeah like the food and then they would get back in line and go back and get another one it it's it Bananas. was preposterous it, like the whole document like it was fascinating it was also like i know you said this earlier kind of edge but ed about like just remembering and like the mcdonald's and teeny bees and but it was like the ultimate, like, man, like that was probably like the last great, awesome decade. Like the 90s, like things yeah. were yep. so simple the best. and like But we awesome. still had like communication in the internet a little like, bit. I, like the perfect amount exactly. of Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. We got to talk about that too. The Which, websites, 
the way they looked? Dude. Do you remember? Just like so 90s. AOL. AOL. Like, oh, and there yeah. were like 10 websites you could go yeah. to yeah. back then, and everything was colored and, you know, like clip art and it, all that shit. I yeah, mean, fucking just, Time Zoo Roman with yeah. like colors behind it. Yeah. Uh, it was it was unbelievable. And it, it got me to think about two things, obviously, is about how like the card market, how they drowned themselves out because they just printed so many fucking cards. Bad, yeah. Dude, I thought the same thing. Right? It made me think of that. It made me think of how smart he was for retiring shit and doing, you know, the Princess Die ones only releasing 12 per store. But he didn't go through with it. Yeah, that, that was a problem. Like, if he had really cut things off at Y2K, I think these it things are still worth still a shitload of money. I bet you, I mean, I know at the end the guy had the box and he's like, this one's worth nine bucks, like, whatever, yeah. whatever. Um, I bet you there still are a few that are super valuable, like well, thousands have, of dollars. Let me. I have the top top forty one in this article, so I'll go to the most expensive one. But yeah, like I think people are still willing. I want to see if Dave can guess any of them. I, it was see, flutters. I'm, I think it was like a tie dyed butterfly one. So Jolly is a walrus. It launched in nineteen ninety seven. Retired a just. I didn't know that that they would just retire these yeah, things. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, genius. yeah, I did too. Um, the white tusk and a brown mustache is worth as much as seventy five thousand okay? dollars. Right now, so, right now. Wait, <sighs> this is an article from from Parade Magazine from two thousand. What is that? Like a woolly mammoth? A walrus. Seventy five grand. That's, that's what it said. Did that's, you guys? I was stunned that Princess Diana is not worth anything anymore. Because I, I remember that vividly. Mm -hmm. Me too. Being a big one and yeah. being a big mm -hmm. deal, and I that makes no sense that it's not like. Yeah, I don't know what this article is saying because it's saying like the, also, when the they lobsters were, were 30. The, uh, I loved how they, the first ever Beanie Baby convention was in Rosemont, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, they, yeah. and like 30,000 no people descended Fuck, upon yeah. Rosemont for no, this weekend. Fucking. And then so besides the card market, like I said, because cards like fuck themselves, just mass producing. Mm -hmm. They're making so, a rebound, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, time, they, now, they, now they are because they're doing it right. They're making limited numbers. They're like out of 23, This you got 12 out of 23. But they all look like shit. Like, the new cards? Cards were, so, cards were so much better when yeah. we were kids. Like, I, I agree. They're I all agree. like holograms and fucking yeah. shiny and yeah, foil yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. They're all glossy, bullshit. very glossy. They're, they're, the, uh, they're like the Oregon uniforms. We like the Alabama uniforms. Like That's kind of what the cards are. Now. So I, why I, that's is... That's a great, great, well put. Thank well you. Put. So tell me why, like... Like explain the fucking NFT NFT thing to me again. Can't, did you I think of that? I don't. Yeah. Know. You know what made me think of that is did you see Fanatics bought Tops yesterday? I did yes, see that. I did. That is like without them is saying it, the writing's on the wall. Like they are a hundred percent gonna turn baseball. Like they're buying those rights. You just know they're gonna start just pumping out NFTs. Oh sure, but yeah. I I think like I don't think there's gonna be physical baseball cards. In a few years, you don't I think, think so. I think it's all. I think digital, so because I think that sucks. Top Shot thing has actually dipped quite a bit. Last I checked, are you familiar with Top Shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember like the craze. But so yeah. Top Shot was that uh, NBA highlight thing mm -hmm. where you'd buy like a Steph Curry three against like the Heat, and yeah. like they're going for a crazy amount of money. And to my knowledge, like those have fallen off a little bit. I mean, they're still like worth money, I, but they're not what they were like a year ago. I thought it was interesting in the beginning of the documentary too. Where they're like explaining bubbles, they had like the black screen, and they referenced uh, the tulip thing from like um, Tulip Mania, Tulip Mania, and like fifteen whatever, and like which is I think the classic, like in school they teach you about this to teach you about market bubbles, and then they had something uh, oh the dot com boom. And then they're like, and cryptocurrency. <laughs> like, like they're just like, <laughs> they, they took just, a lot of subtle shots at crypto. They yeah, really they did. did. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They took a lot I'll of subtle shots. I'll lose a thousand shots. bucks if that's the, the case. Uh, so did you guys, the lady that, the blonde lady that you could tell was still doing pretty well. And then at the end, uh, they finally you showed. You could tell or because she said that she does, she's done 126,000 authenticity. 25 Yo, bucks a pop. Did you do the math? Certif yes, I did. Three. Point two million. Yeah, she's made authenticating fucking Beanie Babies. Fuck yeah, I think everybody pulled out their calculator. Three point yeah. two million dollars on people mailing her boxes of Beanie Babies and her saying like, "Yep, this is real." Yeah, here's <laughs> this is number so and so. Can and you, it's mailing can it you back. imagine like you get it back 
And it's like, yep, that's a real one. It's now worth nine dollars. Thanks for the twenty five. So now, like, yeah. to get it authenticated was twenty five. Well, that's like the same people you feel horrible for that they show up at fucking Pawn Stars. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, I, I just grabbed this out of my grandpa's basement. He had it for a hundred years, yeah, and right. I think it's World War Two. Like, uh, actually, man, that it's was from nineteen eighty four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. dude. I can give you, I can give you fifteen bucks. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And there is a like, Revolutionary War drum. Fuck. Like, and nope. then you're, yeah, you're yeah. standing there. You're like, well, do I take the fifteen or like I don't like you swallow your pride or you. Lug that thing back out of there, and you put it back in Those storage. Those guys are such assholes. <laughs> yeah. They're Rick show. and uh, Chumley. Such assholes. We were but, talking about them last week. So the one thing that I was thinking when I was watching this, like I, I was on the same page as you, Ed, because I'm sitting there laughing at all these people, and then I started thinking, and I'm like, I was the same way with baseball cards. Like I can't, I, point, I can't, and binders I can't binders. shame these people at all because I put all. I mean, I was like fucking 15 years old. That's the difference. Every dime of mine. Yeah, you're right. It was adults. But this is this is where this is this is where this is leading me right now. <laughs> you know how like uh, action figures from when we were kids mm -hmm. are like valuables now, like Ninja Turtles and yep. GI Joes and shit, because they say like once you get to an age where you have money and disposable income, you want to buy those things you like necessarily couldn't as a kid uh, it's or fucking rosebud, man. Yeah. Like it's, that's, yeah. Right. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm thinking last night, I'm like, will beanie babies have a comeback or not? But I don't think they will. Cause it was all adults. Right. Or well, will the kids, kids still want it? Like, will our little sisters in like five they or 10 years because of the adults though, I think, I don't know. You know what though? They, they actually like they're kind of cool like are they cool or like they like have some type of appeal to them i, I think they I, have I an think, appeal to like sorry go ahead well i think they have an appeal to us because of we're talking no, about this listen, kind of Dan, like the listen, nostalgia animals kids will always love animals yeah mm -hmm. and there's something about how those things were and how they had a different thing and their bright colors and they had cool names and the poet like <laughs> there's something about them that i think that they could come back there is, and like they they had that scene in the beginning too, where the guy like the guy Ty, the founder, broke off from whatever toy company he was with, and they interviewed his boss, and he's just like Dakin, Dake, yes, and but he was just like I'm gonna create something simple. They like they're like they have expressive eyes. I'm like those are just black, but, some, <laughs> but I, somehow I somehow they were. Well, somehow they are <laughs> they expressive. Yeah. They're yeah, like yeah, these yeah. little black beads. And it's like that. Is should be the opposite, but he's right, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like Dude. there's something about the way those things look. I like had it. the exact same thought. Yeah. yeah, exact same thought. I was like, that's not expressive, but but it is it kind of is. It's like <laughs> looking at me, got, like all happy. I and got jolly. a question for you guys: Was Ty a good guy or was he a shit bag? I think he was probably a better. I mean, he. I mean, made billions of dollars off of it, and then got greedy and obviously tax evasion. Well, I thought the the tax evasion thing. We can talk about that. I have no problem with that. Fuck, fuck those people for trying to take all his money. But the thing where he was like, after year one, they made a t like they made a ton of money more than he thought, and he gave every employee their entire year salary as a bonus, which like, is such a boss move. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome move. Then the next year, when they made astronomically <laughs> more. He gave them all like Beanie Babies, <laughs> yeah, the billionaire bear, the billionaire oh, kind bear, of like which, giving them crypto or something. Which like, that's why I, which, that's why I'm asking you. Like when I, they said the first part, I was like, man, this guy's actually a good fucking dude. That and meaning. then they said the second part, and I'm like, I probably I think he probably didn't foresee it just falling off a cliff. And like, hey, yeah, these he are probably like thought he trust was doing, for you. Yeah. You know, I agree with you on that, Dave. I, but but it, no, no, no. To give him the benefit no, of the doubt, you're also forgetting no, because like he numbered all of them because he didn't want them to end up on the secondary market. So he was keeping like they had to go to great lengths. Like the Cubs did with their World Series rings. Like you had yeah, yeah. right. So you can't just go to eBay <laughs> can't and go to drop it on there cuz like you're risking your job because he gave you the billionaire bear like you put it on your mantle, dickhead. To me my biggest thing was the biggest argument against against him being a bad guy cuz here's here's what I think. If you have a company and you make as much as he did, 4 billion whatever, billions of dollars, and similar like what Port and I did, you have 12 employees. Those people should all be taken care of, in my opinion. I, in life. And that girl who said she wrote fucking how many poems in like 18 like hours? 77. Yeah, she yeah. wanted 120 grand. He said, that's where I was like, all right, I don't like that's fucked She was up. making 14 an hour. Yes, 12. Fucked up. 12. 12. She didn't even have insurance probably. Yeah. She's dude. an hourly employee. And like those, I know, those that was poems fucked. were that like. That was fucked, dude. Those poems, like I didn't remember the poems until she brought it up. 
And I was like, oh yeah, like you would, it was almost, you know, the thing it reminded me of was like uh, Nantucket Nectars or Snapple, where you yeah. would like open up the thing, like, and you get a little fact. And the Beanie Babies thing was like the same thing. Like I didn't really ever give a shit about the Beanie Babies. Even like my sisters had them. But I remember being like, let's see what this pack <laughs> says. Let's see. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so it when was. When I would get pissed, my sisters, I'd rip it off because that just destroys the, the value. value. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I had to do it. Yeah. You yeah. did it too, right? I Well, I, I actually, we didnn't have your a sis, Your you sister. You know what that reminds older, me of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That reminds me of Roger Clemens' signing move. When he would sign fucking baseball cards, he'd crease the corner so you couldn't fucking sell them. What a dickhead. Yeah. We used to, we used I never to fuck, heard that. that yeah. That's, he's that a either. shithead. Dickhead. He's the worst. Shitbag. That's like the people who wouldn't sign bag. the sweet spot of the baseball. That would drive me nuts. Gino I didn't, wait, that's a thing? Yeah. Contractually obligated not, not yeah. to. I used to, I used to do autographs for like, you know, when I was younger. And uh, so like the middle of the, like you, you, if I had a baseball, I'd be able to show it to you. The sweet spot. Is yeah, like, I know where it is. Yeah, yeah. Like Derek Jeter. We wouldn't do it because he had like a deal with Steiner where like he only he could do it upper on deck that, yeah, upper yeah, deck's yeah. like the worst yeah they so. they like own you for I wanted to uh I wanted to save this for redline but it, it's pertinent to now so on Christmas Eve I was with my dad and we were pounding beers in the basement watching whatever we were watching and I had a treasure chest of fucking his baseball cards that I had and for some way somehow they vanished they got lost in the move parents got divorced whatever it was they're gone a lot of baseball cards i still have all the fuck face cards though which at one point were uh there was like take like print money they were so valuable my dad had a couple sleeves worth of them they're but still uh, they're still decent i said i have they're, one they're, they're, they're still decent like 30 bucks now but they used oh, to be they name your that. price for them really yeah oh, I thought but uh, anyways that. he was telling me a story that i had never heard before that when my mom was pregnant with me they were living in wheaton at the time instead of warrenville and uh she got pissed at him for something, and she's like, fuck all your baseball cards. And he's sitting there watching TV. She took his baseball cards and lit them on fire in the in the stove or in the grill in the backyard. Holy and my fuck. dad found out, and he said that he didn't want to like show weakness and lose the argument, like get pissed. <laughs> so he's just sitting there letting it all internally boil up until one day he like, fuck, I can't believe you lost my you burnt my fucking baseball cards. Jesus. So yes. That's why I was laughing earlier. I completely forgot. That's such a that chick move. That's <laughs> wild. Just burnt his base. There's probably like Mickey Mantles in there. And shit. There's su- that's such a wo- like women go r- immediately for the psychopaths. The, Every last the one. The best way to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what that's what they go for. Damage, yeah. Exactly. Yes. They're, exactly. They're unbelievable at it too. Oh, they they, they 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 have it in their mind waiting. Yes. For you to fucking cross that line. And it's second. They, they yes. say like that is. Like, you know, they always talk about like psychologically, like, oh, men are more aggressive. And it's like, yes, but only like with physicality. Like women are like, I'll beat your ass. Like, like yeah. they say, like statistically, like women are just as aggressive, but it just manifests itself in it's stuff like warfare. that or like character assassination in the group. Like, yes. They will like yes. ruin your reputation yes. for years because who knows why. Yes. Like your dad would never, like if your mom had a stuffed animal from when she was a little kid, he would never take that stuffed animal and light it on fire. Well, that's like. But a woman would, without even thinking. I So my older sister, they'll probably get mad at me, whatever. My older sister loved like troll dolls. Like, so she was like kind of before the Beanie Babe. So she had like hundreds of these troll dolls. And I have a a younger sister and those two are, are on either side. They're five years apart. So my older, my younger sister went in and she was playing. She was like probably like five or six, right? Like a little kid, my younger sister. And she like took scissors and snipped a lot of the troll's hair off. So my older sister freaks out, okay? Waits for my younger, like months and months. My younger sister has a birthday party. She wanted this like Simba, Simba Lion King doll. Finally gets it. Again, it has been months. My older sister... Goes and gets the doll, takes it upstairs, chops all his hair off. Okay, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. so. We have one sister who's like six, the other one who's ten at this time, and my older sister who's lovely. She's a lovely person. Plotted for months to get back at her about it. these troll dolls. Do and, like, it's not message. even learned on it's, her birthday. It's on her birthday. Yeah, wow. So Gotta do it. It's, just, it's genetically encoded they just in their know how to, fucking they know crazy how to, DNA. Like, yeah, Ed. Somehow I'm shocked you didn't bring up the meanie beanie. 
Oh, that guy who was just the fucking rain on everybody's parade. Uh, Rick? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I, you know, that guy, he, I mean, he was right. He was right. He was right. I mean. And his thing was about all collect- collectibles. Like, none of this shit's going to hold his, like, none of it's going to hold his value. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, that's where I, but that's when I don't know what anything, how yes, anything is value. Yes, isn't that a collectible, though? Yes, like, exactly. How does anything have value? Because we say it does. Like, you're, it's worth I, what someone's willing to pay. Yes, I have always exactly. thought that about gold. Like, uh-huh. who the fuck says, oh, because it's shiny? Yeah. Like, now it has, like, modern uses. Like, it conducts electricity well. But it's been the number one most valuable precious metal on Earth for since existence. humans have yeah. existed. Since like, the Mayans, right? All, like, before that, yeah. Egyptians had, like, everybody has been obsessed with gold since the beginning. And why? Because it's shiny? Like, that, to me, like, so, I'm like, why are we still, like, not, like, why? And it's just because it's shiny. Like, that's it. Did yeah. you see the, uh, I think, Dante, you'll like this. You see the thing about De Beers today? Oh, the no. Diamond Company? What? They released, like, a study saying that synthetically grown diamonds, because, like, if you've seen the movie Blood Diamond, like, people are, like, very, that, like, there's a narrative about conflict diamonds. Like, you want to have your diamond source, so people have come up with a way to, like, grow diamonds synthetically yep. so you don't have all these Civil War funding, all this shit. So De Beers released a study saying that, S- that they have found that synthetically grown grown diamonds don't inspire like the same amount of joy as real diamonds. <laughs> See, th- this it. is them grasping at it. straws because they're like, oh, fuck. A shit ton of more product was just introduced to the marketplace, which weighs down our finite amount of product that Dude, we I, control. Oh, man, that's I awesome. Had the di- I had the jewelers on. I had the diamond guys. Yeah, what'd they say? They were just like, it's the... It's like the it looks he's like you will never tell the difference you, yeah. you can't but so my buddy just bought a ring right and he was losing his mind like why the fuck can't i buy a lab grown diamond and it's because they won't like agi certify them or some bullshit and if it's not agi certified you can't get it insured mm-hmm. so th- their study says so 60 percent percent more um it's, it's or it's I'm sorry. It's 25 percent more romantic when it's real. It's 40 percent more special. <laughs> and that's and what even the guys said. They yeah, were like, they were like, how much would you? They're like, would you? So would you buy someone for? He's like, well, would I? If I was telling him, would, would I be okay with you buying someone for your wife? Like, yeah, sure. If that's what you want to do, if you think it's the best move, someone my daughter, I want them to get a real diamond. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like, but it's yeah, fucking biggest bananas. racket yeah. in the world. Well, and then De Beers also. They just buy up everything. Like they own like ninety percent of all diamonds ever mined in existence are just in like a lab, or, or I'm sorry, in a vault in London. And then they just to keep them more scarce, they want to create trickle them out. They just trickle them out, but they have all of them. So they're like because they want to make them seem rare. Yeah. So they just they exactly what Dante said. They just they control the supply. Mm-hmm. Like they're a monopoly. And they control the supply. So now these synthetic diamonds are like, hey, well, they're just they just don't inspire the same emotions as real ones. People know. It's well, crazy. it's true. Like if I found out, I think if I was getting a diamond ring, if I was a chick getting proposed to or something like like, oh, that's a lab grown diamond. It's like not nearly. I'd be like, ah, oh, really? So I get no, it. No Africans bougie, died for this. You bougie <laughs> bitch. I mean, I don't know those Africans. You bougie bitch, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, date. I mean, th- you guys would too. No, I I have dated girls before who said like the opposite actually, that don't like make sure it's not a uh, blood diamond. Yeah, wow. That no Africans died from this diamond. Right. Like I want the fucking blood splattering what? against my face Did, if no, I'm getting diamonds. Were you guys aware that this guy even was like? One of our most richest people in the state, in the city. No, nope. Start we were like too young for that kind of stuff. No, but even then, like I'm always like fascinated by like because you know you think super rich people like that they live in California, they live in New York, mm-hmm. maybe Florida. So you know, obviously, you know Ken Griffin, mm-hmm. the Pritzkers. Yep. And I, I didn't know this guy was like Peter Calamos. He's uh, in the top ten. So I remember it was a big deal because Naperville had it was like two of the state's five billionaires or something. It was Ty Warner and. Uh, and uh, Peter Calamos, or no, I'm sorry. So you John knew Calamos. this guy then? I knew who he was. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I, I mean, know, like it was never growing like growing up in the area. He was like the yeah. name. He was I, the thought name. Oh, okay. yeah, I thought so, it was a company. I thought it was a company. 
until they were I like, thought it was T.Y., dude. Really? I'm the, like, a I lot thought, of people yes, thought they yeah. I, thought really? it was T- I didn't know it was Ty until I watched the doc yesterday. Oh, I thought it was just a toy company uh, called same. Ty. I thought it was T.Y. Yeah. T.Y. Like, T.Y. T.Y. Toys. Hilton. Yeah. 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 T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. I threw it my whole life. I said, oh, I got to have the T.Y. tag. That's funny. Yeah. So but I, he, yo, he like, his lawyer was the biggest fucking dickhead in the whole doc. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was like, I, I went from watching supermodels undress oh, yeah. in front of me to... He was in like Chicago too, right? Stuffed animals. Yeah, he stole. Yeah, Chicago. remember they were like, yeah, "Why yeah. can't we get Ty on for an interview?" And he just like scoffed at them. He was like, "Yeah, like, yeah I mean, zero listen, percent I, chance." Yeah, so yeah. yeah. It, open invite for Ty to come out here. I don't know if anybody could put that into motion, but I could try to be... hit up the Sobolewski family. <laughs> Isn't that? I knew we're wrong. No, I will. He, he sued, sued them. He sued them their ass. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hit them up. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. But uh, like, I feel like I could probably get Sobolewski on here. Being so local. With people like like you know, there might be a way for him to be like, hey, they're not like traditional media, like they're not gonna fucking yeah. Even There's though no gotcha shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just want to have a conversation. Exactly, but probably not. But it's worth a try. Yeah. If anybody knows Ty Warner, because um, I don't like he's just a fascinating guy in general. Dude, he marketing genius. Yeah. Oh, like, genius. Fucking genius. When they when they showed the website and how they cataloged all the shit, like I my mind was blown. Like. They were just so fucking smart in how they did absolutely everything. What did they, they say did. it was the cost of manufacturing one being it was like twelve cents or something, something? like that, yeah. Dude. I mean he, he could have sold those for like fifteen, twenty dollars if you wanted, but keeping it low, smart as yeah. fuck. Like everybody can select afford stores. Them. Yep. yep. I mean, just everything they did was so fucking smart. And then the once it, once the web hit and like he was so psychotic. He had people on staff that just monitored eBay auctions. So he was like keeping tabs on the secondary market. He should have bought them back. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Like he should have he should have been continuously taking them out of cycle and then putting them strategically back on the market for like and just make a gazillion dollars. You're so they're like, actually right. Just send that should. price. Yes. You're right. Cuz cuz like that was one of the complaints from Maybe he was. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. But like that was the complaint. Do about people the do that with like Jordans or anything? They do with stocks. I know yeah. they do that, with st- but like, like concrete valuables. Pump and dump, baby. Have maybe you heard of that? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they do, Dave. Maybe they. Maybe they do with sneakers. <laughs> I'm talking about anything they, like that. Yeah, there's definitely something that they do with that. Like Michael Jordan. Yeah, people owns buy their 90% shit. People of buy their Jordan shit for sure. Or something. I mean, that's like the same De Beers thing we we're just talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. Like yeah. they control, they control the secondary market, the primary market, everything. Like War- that guy Ty Warner, very smart. Also, like I feel like every single rich person, like uber wealthy person, has offshore accounts. How did the fuck did he get busted for that? I feel like it got busted so much later too. 2013, I think. yeah, yeah. 2013. Yeah. He did a couple that years in the 90s. ago, not too long yeah. ago. Yeah, I feel. I don't know. That to me, I was just like, "Is he? How smart is he?" Like everyone, everyone. Like I remember when Mitt Romney was running for president, and they were like, "You have money in the Cayman Islands." He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> duh." Like every rich person does. So like for this guy to be the one person that seemingly like of the elite that get busted for tax evasion, like you have to be like the worst at evading taxes. Fucking beanie babies, dude. Yeah. All right. What do you think? You think we're going to see a resurgence ever? I think so because similar to the Von Dutch, like these fucking kids like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's all it takes nowadays. And, with, and Von you know, Dutch was way more problematic. They had a lot more to overcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like and like I said, like there's something, there's something to those beanie babies. Like they were, they did something right. Yeah, and I think they still like kind of do, and like the nostalgia thing, like we and I said earlier, like the '90s, like it was just a, it just feels like it was a better time. It was wild and, west, and now everybody, like if you, you know, like doesn't like everybody kind of the only thing everybody agrees on is that now is like everything's fucked up. <laughs> so if you want to have like some kind of artifact for when times are were simpler and better, like there's nothing that really to me personifies that more than like the Beanie Baby. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's just one of those things that it was really, uh, un- it was like really fun to watch because I haven't thought about those things in so long. Yeah, agreed. 
And, you know, to see that and see the fucking lady who quit the FBI and how crazy it was and the lines. Dude, and the, the we rap. didn't talk about the rap. Talk about the yeah, rap. We didn't talk about the beanie rap. Yeah. Hum a few bars for us, Dante. Yeah. <laughs> that lady oh, was. Oh, that, that was wild. I didn't know. I don't rem- didn't remember that or anything. <laughs> No, it didn't get any radio plays, which yeah. is bullshit. If you heard it on the radio, you would have liked it. It yeah. would have been on what's uh, uh TRL the that that Instagram account that that oh. Kenny was talking about. I don't know. It's a gold mine though, so don't give it away. It is a gold mine. <laughs> I, why, I don't. I, even, I don't forget the name. I can't of it. There's think this. It it's there, Canadian. There's radio this. Uh, Disney gave it a play. Instagram account that it just highlights radio the Disney. worst worst musical performances ever. They're so good at finding this stuff. I don't know how they find it. I don't it. either because it's, I mean, they're fucking needles in haystacks and they find them all. It's great. And some of these people have gotten like mega famous because of how bad they are. Like William Hung. Yeah. Is that his name from? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, then. Uh, that's a good one. Definitely go check that out because it's great. HBO Max. Uh, but all right, guys. Thanks. Uh, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. We will see you then. 